Hi there, this is Jasmin Junge, also known as Kuschelärmel. And today I want to show you something a bit different from what I normally do. Normally you would find here a lot of Photoshop tutorials, advanced manipulation and such. Um, but today I want to show you what you can do to save your photographs, especially if you have cocked something up. Um, the idea came when we went to Sicily last week and um, I actually had a little cock up with the ISO settings and very bright pictures. Um, so I thought I would make this little video to show you how you can save those kinds of images and to show you what the difference between shooting in RAW and shooting in JPEG actually is. So let's get started. Here you can see one of these beautiful pictures of Sicily that I took. Um, but actually what came out of the camera was this. Uh, as you can see it's way too bright and that is due to me not putting the right settings on and not realizing it until I was back at home because I couldn't really see it on the back of the camera because of all the sun and I had sunglasses on and yes I saw that it was bright but I did not see that it was that bright and that there was something really really off with my settings. I only realized that later. What had happened was that I had put my ISO to 800 during the evening before uh, to shoot in low light and since I always choose the ISO and choose the aperture and let the camera choose the shutter speed, um, what happened was that these came out super overexposed. Well, fortunately for me, they are not completely overexposed. There are no, um, if I go here, you would normally see a warning where you, where the camera has recorded completely white pixels. So as long as you don't get that, there's something to save. Um, usually I try to shoot my pictures a little underexposed because that is easier to fix or easier to work with than overexposed images. But if you shoot in RAW, um, you can save a lot that you wouldn't have thought. So let me show you what I did. Um, here you see the basic uh, panel in Lightroom and what I first did because I knew the exposure was off um, I cranked down the exposure something like this now you can already see that everything is coming back now it's a bit dark but hey um, we are going to fix that also um, what I always do is I, I fiddle with all these more or less simultaneously. I don't just go in and, and do one after the next after the next, but I will go back and change the initial settings too if I see that there's something off. So probably I would start somewhere here. Um, then because it's a very very bright day and we have super harsh and dark shadows and super bright parts in the image that I think look um, a bit too contrasty, I like to turn down the highlights and turn up the shadows. So now you can already see that it evens it out and then to get some highlights or some, some brighter parts back I will go up with the whites. And now as you can see it's a bit um, on the bright side again so I can go down with the exposure even more. I would go somewhere here probably. Um, what I also like to do in this first panel is to crank up the vibrance a bit but you have to be careful especially if you have um, if you have people in then their skin tone may look too saturated very fast. Um, so of course you can also adjust your white balance after the fact but I think for me in this image I don't need to do this. But what I need to do 
is to set the horizon line straight because it, at the moment it looks like the water should be flowing down here to the right. <laughs> so I go to the crop setting and then usually I actually do it by hand um, as far as I like it, especially in panoramas or something that's not always completely straight um, throughout the image. And I like to choose something that fits with my eyes and not exactly with that one line that you can draw here with the straighten tool. There you can just pick up um, the tool, draw a line, I can show you quickly, and then it will straighten it for you. But for me this is, I don't know, it's probably personal preference um, that I don't want it completely like that. So say we're done. And now what I also really like to do is to go into the tone curve and adjust the highlights, mid-tones, maybe, maybe get some more definition back, something like this maybe. Um, what you can also do with most or with a lot of settings in Lightroom is there's this little dot on the upper left corner. And if you click it, you can actually go into the picture and there you can get this back up. Um, there you can see where you are when you go over the image. It will tell you exactly which spot you have chosen. And then if you click and drag, you can actually adjust the curve from within the... Um, the image which is really handy if you have something where you see okay I want this part or that part to be brighter or um, not so bright then this is really a nice um, nice option to do you can by the way also go into the histogram here and it will adjust these sliders when you click and drag inside Something like that. This is also, I think, it's it's a great visual aid. So the longer I look at it, the more I think that maybe we should um, do some white balance anyway. So I think it could be a bit cooler to get rid of some of this super orangey, yellowy highlights on, especially on the um, buildings down there. So let's see, maybe like this. Um, don't want to crank it down too low so it, it will no longer look like it, it was taken in sunlight but a little. So next up um, what I really like to do is go into the HSL tab, use saturation luminance and adjust the sliders um, for the different colors individually. Um, usually I start with the luminance because there you can also get some more contrast out of the picture that is otherwise kind of lost. For example, I would like to get some, get these greens a bit brighter, maybe get the yellows a bit brighter. Um, the aquas, which should be this part, I think could use some boost. There you can see a slight difference in the water and uh, the blues not so much. So like this and for the saturation you can go also maybe uh, I think the, the the sea is definitely saturated enough but maybe get rid of some of those greens because they look really fake. So something like this. Um, you need to be a bit careful because if you have if you have neighboring colors and you change them drastically in different directions, you will get a halo around whatever you are changing. So for example, if I put the green luminance up and the aqua luminance down, okay, this looks this looks fine, but maybe the other way around. 
yes, here you can see there's a definitive halo going on. And if you, you will probably not see it as long as you're looking at it in on the screen or small scale. But as soon as you are trying to get it printed big, and then you will probably end up getting really upset. Well, I would at least. So let's let's get back um, to what we originally had. So I think from this to this with just a few sliders, it's quite impressive. So. Um, just so you can see that actually, even if you cock something up, uh, you can still save a lot of things in Lightroom or the same also goes for camera raw. So the next example that I want to show you is something else about the, the use saturation sliders. I want to show you this picture and the end result here. Um, there was no selective um, editing on this. So I did not use any masks. I did not um, start fiddling with this, with these settings. Not at all. This is just some basic settings like going with the, the highlights and the shadows again and this time in a different direction so that I can get um, the flowers to pop more and then down here I will turn it off so this is basically just from the basic sliders and this is the change that you can reach with the HSL tab and what is also very nice it's the same as for the others if you see such a dot you can click it and you can go in and start dragging and it will change the colors that you chose. And without that, I would have never realized that cranking up the oranges so high would help this image so much because this is basically what makes them glow like this. And I wouldn't I would also not have known that I need to turn down the aquas to get less definition in the background. Here you can see this. So and now for the last example I have here an image taken in, uh, um, in the city underneath some trees and the, the end result will be something like this and as you can see from the history panel there's not much that I actually did. Um, it's basically and we can go through from this one. Um, it's basically adjusting the white balance to be a bit warmer, um, the tint to be a bit greener, to go with the with the trees more or less, uh, to imitate the the light that I felt I saw. And this is also something you do not need to when you are retouching or when you are changing your images from your holidays you don't need to be true to what you think it should look but what you think you saw um, or be more artistic even it's totally up to you and don't let anybody tell you differently or that you should not do oversaturated colors or whatnot just because they they did not see them um, I think it's uh, this perception is really individual. So, okay, let's let's crank down the highlights. So you can see you get back all these details in the background that were almost overexposed. And crank up the shadows. Ah, there we go. We can actually see the trees now. Up some whites to make it pop a bit. and go down with the exposure a little. Something like this maybe. Let's check the original. I think it should be yeah, more or less. <laughs> more or less. Yeah. 
See, this is what I mean. It's uh, even if you know where to drag, it will still look a bit different day to day. Okay, let's leave it at that. Um, now, what I want to show you in this one is what happens if you use a JPEG for this whole exercise. And for this, I'm going to show you basically what I did was I created a JPEG out of this one, um, the original adjusted image, and I created a JPEG out of the unadjusted original. And if you now put the same settings on the on this JPEG file, just by going to development settings, copy settings, check all, copy, development settings, paste settings, then you will see that there is a difference and because Lightroom always takes a bit to, to load this, I mean here you can actually, you can see it a little, you can see it better in Photoshop. So this is the original file from the JPEG, or j the, the, from the original RAW file, the JPEG. This is the adjusted from the RAW file and this is the adjusted from that JPEG file. So when we go in and focus on, on these very bright parts, you can see that in the original there's basically, it looks like there's no information left. Um, then when you adjust the raw file you actually get some information back because the chip, the sensor actually took the information. But if you go from the JPEG file you are losing actually, you are losing a lot of information. You can see it here. All this definition and the dynamic range you are going to lose that. And also if you look at, at these um, parts here, for me at least it feels like the, the JPEG, uh, the adjusted JPEG is a lot grainier than from the raw file. It looks a bit, yeah. There's just not that much information to work with. So if you want to be able to get your holiday pictures um, saved, even if you cock up something or even if it's a hard light situation, um, difficult to expose for everything of course, then I would strongly suggest you consider using the raw files. Because what happens in camera is that if you tell your camera to give you the JPEG, it will shoot in RAW, process it internally, give you something and it might not even be this, it might be something that is more contrasty because the camera just does that, maybe a lot of cameras do, do something like that. And then you lose even more of these parts with the information and going then back and adjusting is Okay, so this really was Admittedly a bit longer than I intended, but I hope you have learned something anyway and if you would like me to do some more Lightroom or camera raw tutorials, then please feel free to suggest what you want to see. Um, also if you have questions or anything, please just leave me a comment. I will try to get to you as fast as I can. And if you like what I do, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, DeviantArt, what have you. I would love to hear from you and to see you again. Hopefully until next time. Bye.